Hey everybody, welcome back. Very exciting astrophysics news this week. The wonderful Beatrice Villarreal and the Vasco Project are about to publish amazing results. So what is Vasco? Well, Vasco is comparing the sky pre-Sputnik from a global sky survey done in 1952 by the US Navy. The US Navy did it in 52 for astral navigation for ICBMs that looked at stars way back. What Beatrice and the Vasco project did was to compare the 1952 pre-Sputnik images with images of today. And what they found is really out of this world. They found missing stars, transients. Now a star does have a life cycle, but in our tiny life cycle here on Earth, you know, we're here for just a few years. We shouldn't see over a hundred stars disappear. So what is going on? That's the question. I spoke to Beatrice and she told me what the Vasco Project does and what they found. And what she has found is startling. Some stars have vanished. Others are seen today, but were not visible in the 1950s. So could whatever drives these vanishing stars be a new force of nature? Or are they evidence of distant life forms with advanced technology modifying their suns? I'm particularly fascinated by time domain astronomy. Extreme transients have a wonderful tendency of rejecting or strengthening some of our best theories. And when it comes to anomalies, well, they are very fascinating because they can really test the boundaries of what we know and we might sometimes find new physical phenomena. Already the Vasco project has found hundreds of these anomalies. For example, in the Vasco project, we found 100 short-lived transients. Now we think that most of these, or we think actually they all, are probably natural phenomena, but we don't know what they are or what is causing these transients that we know are very short-lived and only uh, appear and disappear within a few minutes. Something else that we discovered more recently uh, is a small region of the sky where nine transients appear and disappear within half an hour. We don't know if this image that we found, that is from 1950s, is actually a real observation or if it could be some type of contamination. We still don't know and I hope that we'll find out rather soon. What else might be out there? I'm particularly fond of surveys from the 1950s. Why is it so? Well, because in the 1950s our sky was clean from any human contamination. There were no satellites and not millions of pieces of space debris as it is today. That means that the catalogues from the 1950s, the images from the 1950s, are goldmine in order to search for alien space probes. You can help the Vasco project by comparing old and new stellar photographs, looking for differences that might just be the clue that reveals the presence of an alien civilization. Or a new phenomenon in our universe? We have currently 150,000 candidates of possible vanishing stars and we need your help to actually look through them. For this we have created our website that can be found here. And it would be great if you could go to the website and help us uh, to look through some of the images at least. We live in interesting times. Not only can you now help the Vasco Project search for anomalies in space, for the first time a major government has admitted that UAPs, UFOs, whatever you want to call them, are real. By doing all this data mining, I hope that Vasco will succeed in finding a vanishing object or maybe an object that has appeared that wasn't there 70 years ago. I think this will be extremely exciting because then we can really maybe find something that is indicative of extraterrestrials and their technology. At least I'm hoping for that. That's great. So am I. Because the truth is out there. Okay, stop it there. I'm now going to tell you a secret about finding UFO information. A lot of people don't realize that your country limits your access 
to data. Just look at this. This is a Google search for the term UFO in the US, in Italy, in Serbia, and in France. The search results were very different. Some countries are far more open at sharing data and others are quite closed. So to get round of that issue, I use NordVPN. This is how it works. What is a VPN and how does it work? All about it in this video. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It's a tool that encrypts your internet traffic and hides your IP address and virtual location. What's a VPN used for? A virtual private network significantly boosts your online privacy and security. Thanks to its encryption, third parties cannot spy on your online activity. Even your internet service provider cannot see what you do online. A VPN also allows you to overcome internet censorship. All your traffic is routed through a remote server, so you can access websites restricted in your country. Because I like NordVPN, they're sponsoring this video, and I'm happy to recommend their service to you. So I can pass on two amazing discounts using this promo code. Firstly, 30 days free trial to see what you can find in the World Wide Web. And secondly, a massive discount. What's not to love?